Hello, everybody. On the record in state of Michigan versus Tiffany Janine Hill, 2102157 SM. Matt Nagel for the people, Your Honor. Assistant Public Defender Joseph Hardy on behalf of Ms. Hill. And you are Tiffany Hill? Yes. Today is the date for free trial. I've been handed a plea offer. Ms. Hill pleads guilty as charged as a killer brood and no upfront jail. Is that a full statement of the offer? It is, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Hill, that's your understanding of what they're offering you? Yes. And you're interested in accepting? Yes. Retail fraud in the third degree is a misdemeanor punishable by up to 93 days in jail and or $500 in fines plus court costs or three times the value of the property stolen, whichever is greater. And you can receive up to two years of probation. You understand the possible penalties? Yes. You have a killer agreement to know up front jail. So that means if at sentencing I were intending to send you to jail, you could withdraw from your plea and go to trial instead. But if I place you on probation for this offense and you violate probation, you face up to 93 days in jail. Understand? Yes. Some criminal convictions have other consequences. If you are a citizen, foreign travel may be restricted. If you're not a citizen, you may be removed from the country, excluded from admission to the country, or denied naturalization as a citizen. You have the right to have an attorney in this matter. Mr. Hardy's representing you. You have the right to a trial that could be by jury. Did you have an opportunity to review and advise the rights and plea information? Yes. Did you sign this? Yes. Did you have the opportunity to ask Mr. Hardy all of your questions? Yes. Do you understand that if you proceed with pleading guilty, you will give up each one of these rights? There will not be a trial of any kind. Yes. You were on probation or parole on the day this occurred, January 16 of 2021, and you plead guilty. You could be admitting a probation or parole violation. Are you ready to proceed with your plea? Yes. Raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give will be the truth under penalty of perjury? Yes. Put your hand down. Ms. Hill, on January 16th of 2021, were you at the Meyer at 6200 South Pennsylvania Avenue? Yes. Did you take some property that was offered for sale? Yes. Tell me, what did you take? Um, there was a Fortnite item, and I don't recall the name. It was two toys. And you passed by the registers without paying for them? Yes. And you did that on purpose? Yes. And this occurred within the city of Lansing, state of Michigan? Yes. Additional questions on the factual basis? Nothing from the people you know. No, Your Honor. Ms. Hill, did anybody make any promises or threats to you other than your plea agreement to get you to plead guilty here today? No. Are you pleading guilty of your own free choice? Yes. And to the charge retail fraud in the third degree, how do you plead? Guilty. your guilty plea to be knowingly, voluntarily, accurately made with sufficient facts on the record on how much to base your plea, therefore accepted. I'm trying to decide if I want to go to immediate sentence. <laughs> Ms. Hill, what's your deal? What's my what? You were rude in here earlier. You were rude to my staff. You were rude to the lawyers. You snickered. I don't understand what you're, what's going on. With what? I'm... Well, why are you rude to everyone and why did you snicker when I said I'm trying to decide if I'm going to sentence you right now? Oh, that wasn't towards like you. That was like, because we had just discussed that if that would be a possibility, that would be good. Like the last court dates, best. If I, it wasn't like rudely or anything. I didn't mean it like that. So mm -hmm. sorry if you got that. That's not how I intended. I found your behavior maybe in the last 30 minutes or so to be kind of disrespectful and rude to everyone. No. Mr. Nagel on sentencing. Um, Your Honor, I, I, I just asked the court follow the delivery to the front jail. Um, there's no, it does not appear to be any restitution in this matter. Um, and it does not appear that there has been a prior uh, retail fraud conviction. So I don't think probation is inappropriate given the circumstances. Mr. Hardy. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, so, uh, Ms. Hill, uh, with the, um, the amount of things that were um, stolen, uh, it was uh, uh, $41.98 worth. And the fact that she is uh, not someone that has made a, made a habit. 
um, you know, of breaking the law or um, shoplifting, uh, we would just request fines and costs and not support that. Ms. Hill, what would you like to tell me before I sentence you? Um, I would like to tell you that I made a mistake and I'm aware of it. And don't plan on it happening again. Do you have any other court cases going on or anything like that? No. Sentence of the court is $300. When can you pay that? Um, can I go on a payment plan? Yep. Tell me what you'd like that to be. Um, how much is the total? 300. Okay, can we do like 100 a month? Sure. When would you like your first payment to be due? I can pay it by the end of this month. Where do I have to? <laughs> it's oh. April 29th right now. So oh. tomorrow's the last day of the month. <laughs> okay. Try to take that back. Day. Sorry. Okay. Pick a different day. Um, May 15th, two weeks. May 15th? Yeah. The Friday of that week is May 17th. Does that work? Yeah. 100 a month beginning May 17th. And around the 17th of each month thereafter. Yes. So you can pay by coming up here and paying at the window. You can mail it. You can use our website, but the website charges a fee. Okay. If you want to pay any extra fees, mail it or come pay it up here at the court at the window. Okay. Okay. Now, if you can't pay, you need to call us and let us know that you're having a problem that month and we will give you more time. Okay. But if you don't pay and you don't call us, a show cause could happen and then eventually you can avoid all of that by just either paying it or calling us if it's a problem. Okay. Okay. When I say call us, I mean call Judge Buchanan's office and talk to my staff, not the clerk's office. They're not going to be the ones keeping track of your file. Okay. Questions on that? No. Okay. You're all set, Ms. Hill. Thank you. You're welcome. Said Mr. Eisler, come up and do his felony, please. First, oh, this is already bound over, right? From right. Got that. I did find the bind over. Right? May, may I approach? With what? Another 37 copies of the information? I, I, just it well, I have one. Okay. I've marked one in the file with a sticky note. It is my obligation to hand them out. How many copies did you bring? I always bring six. <laughs> right here now. Okay. On the record in State of Michigan versus Adam Eisler. 2401145FD. Mr. Stevens, on behalf of people. Uh, Joe Cross, B5584, on behalf of Mr. Eisler. Thank you. Sir, Adam Eisler? Yes, Your Honor. So, it's my understanding the case was bound over and then transferred here from circuit court. So, we're going to try to enter a felony plea to that. Correct. Okay. I even have your marked up version because I haven't had a chance to retype it. So, bear with me. I have I... my own checklist. So, we'll, we'll work through this together. Great. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about that later. I am told the defendant would like the court to accept a circuit court plea from him today. This means the plea is entered and accepted here in this court. The case is assigned to a circuit court judge for sentencing, but if you're in specialty court, I retain it as a specialty court judge for um, purposes of administering the specialty court. Do you consent to that, Mr. Stevens? People do. Thank you. And Mr. Cross? Yes, ma'am. And Mr. Eisler? Yes, Your Honor. Now, the court has already bound the matter over to circuit court, and we have the information because Mr. Stevens brought six copies. Uh, and the plea today will be on the reading of the information. Um, Mr. Um, Stevens, what counts will the defendant be pleading to today? Count one, Judge. All right. And uh, Mr. Eisler and Mr. Cross, do you waive the reading of the additional counts? Waived. <clears throat> waived, Your Honor. I think that's two and three, right? Right, yes. Uh, okay. Mr. Stevens, will you read the charge to the defendant? People of the state of Michigan versus Adam Eisler, Circuit Court Docket Number 23899FH, State of Michigan, County of Ingham. The name of the people of the state of Michigan, the prosecuting attorney for this county, appears before the court, informs the court that on or about the date, April 29, 2023, at or near the location of Abbott and Lake Lansing Road, which is in the city of East Lansing, Ingham County, State of Michigan, the defendant did in count one operate a vehicle upon a highway that being Abbott Road while under the influence of alcoholic liquor or having an alcohol content of 0 0.08 grams or more per 100 milliliters of blood, contrary to state law. Take notice of this, that the defendant was previously convicted of operating impaired on or about February 4, 2020 in the 52-2 District Court and operating while intoxicated on or about September 30th, 2020 in the 89th District Court 
Therefore, upon conviction, the defendant will be subject to the enhanced sentence under state law and vehicle forfeiture pursuant to state law. Uh, as a third offense, uh, I'm sorry, this offense is known as operating while intoxicated. Third offense notice is a felony punishable by $500 to $5,000 in either one or two, five years or probation with 30 days to one year in jail, at least 48 hours to be served consecutively. And 60 to 100 days of community service rehabilitative programs cost the prosecution, universe government for emergency response and expenses for prosecuting defendant mandatory vehicle immobilization for not less than one year for more than three years. And this offense was done against the peace and dignity of the people of the state. Thank you. Judge, the only thing I'd add um, is I believe the immobilization can be waived with uh, specialty court participation. I know the jail can be waived. I don't know that the immobilization can. You might have to provide me something to send to the session. It is the law. I, I will. Okay. Nobody's brought that up before. But I have a question before I go further. I see that Mr. Eisler's provided an address in Fraser, but he has a local address. Correct. Okay. Just making sure because our yes, specialty court is in yes. the greater Lansing area. Yes. Okay, good. All right. Mr. Eisler, will you raise your right hand? Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give will be the truth under penalty of perjury? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. So, well, Mr. Eisler, this charge is commonly called operating while intoxicated third offense. Do you understand this charge? Yes, Your Honor. And how do you wish to plead to this charge? Guilty, Your Honor. You understand that this charge carries a maximum possible penalty of, looks like, either one to five years in prison or probation uh, with 30 days to one year in jail, at least 48 hours to be served consecutively, unless you're in a specialty court? Yes, Your Honor. And there can be fines of five hundred to five thousand dollars plus court costs assessed. Yes, Your Honor. And you understand that you will be ordered to perform a community service. It says sixty to one hundred eighty days of community service may be ordered. Yes, Your Honor. You'll be ordered to complete rehabilitative programs, pay the cost of prosecution, reimburse the government for emergency expenses. You understand all of that. Yes, Your Honor. And as your lawyer has brought up, mandatory vehicle mobilization may apply unless. The law has been amended to exclude specialty court. He's going to provide that information. But if the law doesn't say it, I might have to immobilize your car. You understand? I understand. It's because the interlock program, they waive the immobilization so that you can participate in the uh, uh, ignition interlock program. Okay. But I'll provide something to the court. Now, uh, are you on or I usually, you know, Mr. Stevens, you did change this and you want me to ask it as you are you on, but I usually just advise them if they are. And that came up only because there are people with a special status and I was asked not to ask people on the record if they were on HIDA. So that's why I started changing the phrasing of that. So that's why I usually just say if you were on probation, parole or felony bond, you could be subject to a violation. Your probation, parole or bond could be revoked as a result of the plea. Understand? Yes, Your Honor. Hopefully when we get to this point, you're not anymore to be coming into the program, but I still have to tell you that. All right. If you've ever been convicted of a felony in the past, you can be subjected to penalties as an habitual offender. You understand that as well? Yes, sir. Right. Now there are rights that you will be giving up by entering a guilty plea today. You had an opportunity to review and advise your rights and plea information? Yes, sir. Right. I will do it. And you signed it? Yeah. Okay. I'll go over your rights with you orally on the record as well. You understand you have the right to have a trial by jury? Yes, Your Honor. And the right to have a trial by a judge? Yes, Your Honor. The right to be presumed innocent? Yes, Your Honor. The right to have the prosecutor prove your guilt beyond a reasonable doubt? Yes, Your Honor. The right to have witnesses against you appear at trial and the right to cross-examine those witnesses against you? Yes, Your Honor. The right to have the court order your own witnesses to appear for trial? Yes, Your Honor. The right to remain silent and not have your silence used against you in any way? Yes, Your Honor. And the right to testify at trial if you wanted to? Yes. Do you understand that you give up each of these rights if you choose to plead guilty today? Yes. Okay. You also give up any claim that the plea was a result of promises or threats that were disclosed, uh, not disclosed today, or that it was not your own choice to enter this plea. You understand? Yes. Do you understand that any appeal of your conviction and sentence would not be automatic, but you would have to ask for permission to appeal your conviction to the Court of Appeals? Yes, Your Honor. If your plea is accepted, you'll be giving up your right to appeal any issues that would otherwise be appealable if you're convicted at trial. You understand that? Yes, Your Honor. And then any appeal from your conviction and sentence pursuant to the plea would be application of by leave to appeal. 
not by automatic right. And that's kind of what I mean when I say you'll have to ask permission to appeal. You have to do an application for a leave to appeal. You don't have an automatic right to appeal like you to trial. You understand? Yes, sir. Mr. Stevens, will you state any agreements that are a part of this plea today? Thank you, Your Honor. The defendant will be attending the guilty plea to count one, on September 27th, count one. People will dismiss count two and three of felony information. Position of issuance of the plea agreement that the defendant will enter into the 54 A district court's variety court program. Upon successful completion of the terms and conditions of that program, the conviction for count one shall be amended to the lesser offense of OWI for operating while intoxicated second offense. So I have to just clarify one thing about our program. I don't think this is captured here, which is they get the charge reduction after one year of delayed sentence. The, they don't have to finish the whole thing to get the charge reduction. And I think this doesn't capture that completely. Uh, uh, that's, why, that's why I worded it following the terms and conditions. So if this is the terms and conditions of your program, then that is how it will operate. So um, to be clear, the agreement, firstly, Mr. Eisler, is you're pleading to count one today. Two and three will be dismissed in their entirety when this plea and sentence are done. You understand that part? Yes, sir. The specialty court part is that if you come into specialty court, you'll be coming in on the felony plea. For the first year of delayed sentence, you are on your felony plea. So if you were to be terminated from the program, either voluntarily or involuntarily during that first year, you would be sentenced for OWI third offense, the felony charge. If you successfully are completing your first year of the program, a charge reduction is granted um, down to the OWI second, which is a misdemeanor. And then you continue in the program for another year-ish. I say ish, because it just sort of depends on how long it takes you to get the charge reduction yeah. um, on the misdemeanor charge. And if you were to unsuccessfully leave the program in the second year, you'd be sentenced on the misdemeanor. So you'd face a maximum penalty of up to a year in the jail. But the goal is you finish the whole program, graduate, and then you don't have to be sentenced for any violations or terminations. But that's how the program works. So I just want to be clear that that is how specialty court works should you choose to be a specialty court participant. You understand? Yes, sir. Is that a full and accurate statement of the plea agreement? Yes, yes, I'm here. Okay. All right. And is that how you understand it, Mr. Eisler? Yes, Your Honor. Have you received any promises beyond this plea agreement to get you to plead guilty today? No, Your Honor. Any threats? No, Your Honor. You're agreeing to enter this plea of your own free choice? Yes, Your Honor. Let's talk about the factual basis. Mr. Eisler, on April 29, 2023, were you uh, at a location on Abbott Road near Lake Lansing Road? Yes, Your Honor. Was that in the city of East Lansing, Ingham County, Michigan? Yes, Your Honor. Were you driving a motor vehicle? Yes, Your Honor. Prior to or during the operating of that vehicle, had you been drinking alcohol? Yes, Your Honor. Can you tell me what you were drinking? Yes, I drank the night before. I went out to bars in East Lansing. I had um like tequila shots liquor and, um, okay like tequila. i just had liquor okay a lot of liquor yes okay. I, I don't think i stopped drinking till around 3 34 in the morning okay and then there came a time where you had police contact yes your honor the next day did you have a car accident or did they pull you over they just pulled me. you pulled you over and when the police officer pulled you over he suspected or she suspected he or she suspected that you had been consuming alcohol yes and did you have a test of your bodily alcohol content? Yes. Was that by breath or blood? Blood. Blood. What was the result of your blood test? 0.224. You understand by entering this plea today, you'll be giving up any complaints about how that test was performed? Yes, Your Honor. Were you previously convicted of operating while impaired February of 2020 in the 52-2 district court? Yes, Your Honor. Were you also convicted of operating while intoxicated September of 2020? in the 89th district court. Yes, Your Honor. Additional questions on the factual basis? Satisfied, Your Honor. The court will affirmatively state that it has not agreed upon the sentence with anyone involved in the case. Are counsel aware of promises, threats, or inducements for this plea other than those that were disclosed on the record today? None, Your Honor. None, Your Honor. Does counsel believe the court has complied with 6.302 in the local administrative order allowing a felony plea in district court? I just have two questions. You want to talk about the consecutive sentence? I do. Okay, go ahead. Thank you. 
Uh, Mr. Eisler, you, were you on parole at the time of this offense? No, yeah. Okay. I'm not your honor, but I appreciate the I appreciate the promotion. I'm sorry. Um, even though you weren't on parole, you understand that if you were on parole, this conviction would result in a mandatory consecutive sentence. Yeah. Okay. Were you on felony bond at the time? No. Okay. Even though you weren't on felony bond, you understand that if you were, this conviction may result in a consecutive sentence. Yes. Honor, you have. Okay. With that, are you satisfied now? I am. Oh, satisfied now. Okay. All right. The court will find the plea to be accurate, voluntary, and understandably made. This plea is accepted. I guess this case is technically Judge Jamal's, but it will stay here with me for consideration of sentence to special chief court. Have your agreement to participate that you signed here. I have to just uh, go over the admissions conditions. Mr. Eisler has been referred to the 54A treatment court pursuant to statute. The court finds the following conditions to be true prior to defendant's admission to the program. Mr. Eisler has been assessed and shown to meet clinical eligibility criteria under the statute. Mr. Eisler understands the consequences of entering the treatment court and agrees to comply with all court orders and requirements of the program and treatment providers. Mr. Eisler is not an unwarranted or substantial risk to the safety of the public or any individual based upon the screening and assessment or other information presented to the court. Mr. Eisler is not a violent offender. Uh, Mr. Eisler has completed a pre-admission screening and evaluation assessment that includes a review of his criminal history and whether he has been admitted to, participated in, or is currently participating in a specialty court and the results of his participation, an assessment of the risk of danger or harm to, individu to the individual, others, or the community, a review of his substance use disorder and an assessment of whether he has a current substance use disorder, a review of his mental health history, a review of any special needs or circumstances of Mr. Eisler that may potentially affect his ability to receive treatment, follow the court orders, and he has also agreed to cooperate with any for future evaluation assessment as directed by the treatment court. But the agreement of the prosecutor sentencing will be delayed in this matter as provided by MCL 771.1. At the end of the delay period, if the individual is compliant with all terms of the program, then a charge reduction of misdemeanor or OWI second offense will be authorized. Now I have to alter your bond conditions to specialty court bond conditions. Most of them are probably really similar right now. Um, you are to comply with all your current bond conditions, including these. If they have not been on there, they're added now. Uh, Mr. Eisler shall immediately report to 54A District Court Probation Department to complete all required pre-sentence paperwork, schedule a pre-sentence interview appointment, schedule a substance abuse assessment if one has not already been completed, and set up any additional substance testing requirements that were not previously ordered. Defendant shall complete the scheduled pre-sentence interview and substance abuse assessment on the date, time, and at the location scheduled by the Probation Department. Defendant shall not possess use, consume, or be in the presence of alcoholic beverages, marijuana, and or controlled substances, nor be present in any place where the consumption of substances is the primary business, including bars, dispensaries, bowling alleys, and the bar portion of a restaurant. Defendant shall provide a copy of any current prescriptions to the specialty court probation officer and any new prescriptions within 48 hours of receipt. Defendant shall submit to daily PBTs before 9 a.m. and pay the associated fees unless you're wearing an alcohol tether. Defendant shall submit to random urine screens at least once per week and pay the associated fees. Defendant shall submit to additional testing for alcohol and or other drugs at the request of probation, the judge, police, or any other agency referred to by the court. Defendant shall attend 12 step meetings three times per week and provide verification of meeting attendance to probation. Defendant uh, or failure to comply with conditions of probation may result in a finding of contempt of court and forfeiture of bond. Bond violations may alter one's acceptance into the specialty court program. Because this is a felony charge, we do have to order that you get your DNA swab taken. So we'll give you the order to get your DNA collected at East Lansing Police Department by June 6th. So should we be in probation with the... Oh, yeah, stuck it's in here. Ah, I found it. Thank you. Sorry. I knew it was around here somewhere. <laughs> Sentencing will be June 6 at 830. For counsel, uh, so the way this works is we have him come be sentenced on a special court day. So we start our review session at the 830 time. He probably won't be sentenced until clo closer to 930. So I need Mr. Eisler here at 830 to observe the session of the treatment court before he's sentenced. And then if counsel wants to come closer to 930 and join your client for sentence, that's acceptable to me. And what would be in this 
courtroom? Yes. Thank you. Restitution should not be an issue. As you said, it was a traffic stop, not a crash or anything like that, right? Correct. Yes. yes. Okay. So Mr. Warnsley is going to take you down to probation. I think he's going to meet with Ms. Hannah today to get what you need because the normal special preparation is out today. This is But Brendan is a backup. He'll help you out, make sure that you get what you need so that you'll be ready for sentence on June 6th. Anything else for the record? Nothing from the defense. All right, thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, sir. Come on. Be safe. Be well. Sleep sweet and much love.